Well, by episode 20, it should be Christmas. I'll get you an abacus. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> News, reviews, interviews, and all things metal. From the Kensington Place Studios, it's According to Metal with Jason and Dick. For those that are about to According to Metal, we salute you. It's kind of a half-assed ACDC reference, but you get where I'm going. We're going to be talking ACDC and all types of stuff here on According to Metal. Welcome to the program, guys. Episode number five of the show. So glad that you guys are here. And, of course, I'm Jason D. Wilkins in the Kensington Place studios talking metal with you. News, reviews, interviews, and all things metal that we're going to do here for you on this episode of the podcast. But I can't do the show alone. I won't do the show alone without my guy, Biv. Biv, what's going on, man? Oh man, just uh, I'm ready to rock myself. There's there's so much uh, so much news. There's there's some great reviews, an awesome interview coming up. Yeah, uh, really so. excited about that. That's going to be awesome. Darren Chris going to be joining us later on in the program from the band Sun Crown. He's got some other stuff he's working on that we're going to talk to him about. But Biv, hey, I didn't even tell you this, um, but um, what's well? I, let me ask you, what's the weather like down there by you? It is hotter than uh, the blue blazes of hell right now. Is it? See, uh, w- what is hot for you, though? Well, okay, uh, hot for April. It, today it was 85 degrees Ooh, here in even... central, Indi- central Indiana, 85 degrees in April. Yeah. Uh, Bill so... lives in uh, the Indianapolis area. I live in Indiana, too, but I'm further north, closer to Michigan. It was 80 here, though, yeah. which wasn't yeah. much less. So it is officially, there's a small window, especially in Indiana or the Midwest, if you're familiar, uh, of grilling season, which has officially begun. Many can say that grilling season never ends if you're Biv or myself, but it is officially grilling season, which is a lot of fun. We grilled earlier on this evening. And by the way, Biv, just got to tell you, I got the badass Weber. It wasn't in the budget. I had to spring on a new grill. I got the the 22 inch, you know, like with the side table thing and the the you know gas starter if if you want to use it for for charcoal and the charcoal bin and all types of crap, dude. It's awesome. I that is what the actual name of it is, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Oh, absolutely. That's nice. Yeah. And, uh, and you, just just for the you got to have a new Weber. No, we do. We had, and this is the thing. I'm going to get a Weber's not a paid sponsor of the show, but I'd love it if they were. I know Biv would too. Uh, we're replacing a Weber grill that I had for 11 years. We just got a new one. Um, uh, used it for the first time this evening. But I got to say, look, and I'm just going to say this. And if I offend some of you, it won't be the first. It won't be the last. Charcoal is the only way to grill. And if you don't grill on charcoal, then you may as well be cooking in an oven because all you're doing is cooking in an outdoor oven if you're using gas. If you're offended, get over it. Charcoal's the way to go. Step up, man up, and grill on the charcoal grill. Sorry. And and not just charcoal. Lump charcoal. Yes, lump charcoal. Absolutely. If you buy Kingsford and – by the way, speaking of this, I thought of you, Biv. You'll you'll find this funny. Uh, So I'm reading the Weber, like, owner's manual, and they have, like, a grilling guide. And I'm like, okay, let's see what this is. And there's a couple tips in there that are actually pretty interesting. And, you know, you know grilling even more than I do, but I like to – you know, especially the last couple years have come leaps and bounds and – my appreciation and kind of interest in grilling outdoors and smoking and stuff like that. But one of the things I found is when they talked about lighting your, your briquettes, your charcoal, whatever you do, they absolutely have a note at the bottom that says, notice we did not give directions on how to use lighter fluid because we believe you shouldn't use it. And here's why. And it just goes into like this diatribe of like, it sucks. It ruins the food. Don't do it. Use a chimney starter or use a lighter cube if need be. Or use some newspaper, something. It's just, I, to me, I just found it very funny. No, that that's great, and that's exactly the way it should be. So, okay, so giving you, according to metalheads out there, if you haven't grilled on a charcoal grill yet, if you have a gas grill because you want to take the easy way out, stop being a pansy. Go to the store, buy a cheap ass little Weber. You'll have it for a decade. It's amazing, and you're way better off. And we'd love to hear your feedback or uh, <laughs> feedback on the Facebook page. Let us know if you're a charcoal griller. We want to hear from you. If you're a gas griller, 
once you get a charcoal grill, then we want to hear from you. Is that yeah, I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear from you until then. Yeah, I, I would yeah. absolutely agree. But there are some things I want to hear besides charcoal grills and besides grilling outdoors, and that is the latest in metal news. Biv, you ready? Let's do this thing. Let's go. It's time to give you some headlines. The metal news you need to know right now. All right, Huey Lewis, what's the latest news in the world of metal? Well, before I get started on that, I didn't want to say anything while you were uh, doing the intro there, but isn't this episode six? (laughs) It might be. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, when you're having fun, you lose count, man. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Well, you see, that's that. what happens when you get past how many, you know, how many fingers I have. I, you know, that's true. That's good. I, I counted all on my left hand and I didn't move to the right yet. And then I'll run out of toes soon. And then before I know it, I won't know what the hell I'll do. I guess once yeah. we get past episode 20, I'll have no clue. On well, by episode 20 should be Christmas. I'll get you an abacus. How about that? <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Smart ass. Anyway, dude, let's talk metal news. What you got, man? Well, the first thing is a, a follow-up to, um, you know, we've been kind of talking about this whole ACDC story, and, you know, they, Brian Johnson was losing his hearing, and, um, you know, doctors had told him, hey, if you go back on stage, you could permanently lose your hearing, and he mentioned that to the band. The band just didn't even think twice. They didn't blink an eye. They just, bam, they said, all right, well, thanks. Thanks for playing, and went on a search the world over for a new singer. And we tossed around some ideas of who they might get, and then there was the rumor of Axl Rose, and he was seen leaving a rehearsal studio with them. And Well, it's now official. Axl Rose will be fronting ACDC for the remainder of the scheduled dates plus the 10 makeup dates uh, that were initially canceled when Brian Johnson couldn't go. So now that it's official, and now that you've heard... I'm sure you've probably heard a couple of the clips, Jason, right? You have. Probably heard. Okay. What are your thoughts on that now? Well, let me, I mean, there's no prioritization of my thoughts on this. Um, First off, Axel sounds really good. Um, And I think a lot of us especially would be interested in whether the stuff he did with Guns N' Roses uh, or whether the stuff that he's doing with ACDC, there's always a question of, okay, Axel, you haven't, you know, uh, you haven't been performing often for quite some time. What do you still sound like? And uh, I think he sounds really, really good. I'll give him that. I'll also say that um, I think, and I'm curious your thoughts on this, I gut reaction I got to side more with Brian Johnson on this and think he's kind of getting the raw end of the deal here. I almost think like it seems like he's getting kind of pushed out, Um, which there's a part of me who thinks I don't know if a band who's had him as a singer for what going on 35 years. Yes, since 1980. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it'd be like, you know, 36 years to just push him to the side. There's a part of me. It's like they wouldn't do that. Well, but did you see there's the other release? part of me who goes, ah, I don't know. And I'm just, I think if that's truly the case, regardless of who the replacement singer is, that's really shitty. Pardon my French. Well, first of all, it's perfectly good English. Secondly. It's true. They, you know, ACDC, uh, when they announced Axel as the, the new front man to finish off the tour, um, they, you know, did the correct thing, at least publicly, and said, you know, hey, we want to thank Brian Johnson for all his years of service and yada, yada, yada. But it was so businesslike. It was like, um, you know, it was like he worked for them. It wasn't like he was a bandmate or right. a family. So exactly. Well, that's that, kind of the, just – wouldn't it just be easy to say, look – Here's the situation with Brian. We have an opportunity to go with Axl Rose. We're going to do it, and stay tuned because Brian's still our guy. You know? Right. How hard would that be to come out and say? Well, and I don't know if you saw this part, but they actually they auditioned quite a few people. One of the people that they auditioned that probably should have gotten the gig, really, 
is uh, the vocalist for the ACDC tribute band Back in Black. Okay. Uh, they, they flew him in along with one of his other bandmates, I think maybe the guitarist. I can't remember exactly who it was. And they, they brought him into the studio. They let him lay down a few tracks. And then in walks ACDC. Here they come in. And he turns around, and there's Angus Young and, you know, all the other guys. And, you know, he's this is a, you know, he, he said he always dreamed of wanting to meet them one day and whatnot. And, and it was, you know, they interviewed him, you know, uh, and uh, the article's on Blabbermouth if you want to read it in its entirety. But essentially he got to live his dream he got to to sing for acdc and they said he did a great job that he nailed it which of course he did he's been doing it for years um but let's face it axel rose is a draw yeah and that's the thing that sucks about it though because i think and i'm being serious when i say this i will have i would have more of an interest maybe more of a rooting interest in actually hearing a replacement Brian Johnson sounding like vocalist for ACDC. Very similar to how this isn't metal. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. You say what you want. But I've been fascinated with the story of Arnel Pineda, who's the lead singer of Journey now. Similar concept. You know, you have a guy who sings in a band that does Journey songs, and now he's the lead singer of the band Journey. I mean, it's just amazing, and I think that's a that is a a just a underdog story that many people could get behind and really root this guy on. I'm we way more interested in going to see that show, honestly, than I would if Axl Rose were fronting ACDC, which clearly is now the case. Well, I agree. Um, now, uh, probably a, a case that's closer to my heart is is that of Camelot. You know, Roy Kahn left in what 2012 um and they brought in um Tommy Kavar uh, who's amazing. Thank you, Tommy Kavar who's amazing, but they sound very very similar. Um and they continue to make new music um that is still being heard. Journey unfortunately is you know kind of uh left in the 80s and uh no one's really listening to their new stuff. But, but Camelot, not only is Tommy able to perform the old Roy Kahn stuff to a T, but he can he also does new stuff that sounds so much like Roy in many cases that he hasn't left the fan base behind. So now I recognize the fact that, that Axel is just a replacement singer for the tour. I get right. that. And that's the you issue. Know. Like if ACDC plans on recording another album, now what do you do? You're not going to get Axel Rose to do it. I'm sorry. That's just not going to happen. At least I'd be shocked. So what do you have? You, you go crawling back up to Brian Johnson again? No. So what, what do you do now? I don't know. Well, just... uh, I don't know. Maybe they go back to the back and black guy, you know, or who knows? Yeah. You know, I, I guess we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But at least for the for the rest of this year, um, you know, Axel's going to be able to do that. And the way the schedule falls on the Guns N' Roses tour um, with the ACDC dates, it gives him enough time off between dates. They've worked it out perfectly. I have to give it to both band managers they have worked it out perfectly so, so what's the over under on the amount of shows that start way later than they're supposed to due to axel rose being the front man for both bands well you know i know he still gets a lot of heat for that <laughs> but, the, but the, re- the reality is in the last several years going back to probably 2012 2013 he really hasn't been habitually late that's that's not something that that he really does that much anymore so I can't say he hasn't done it at all because I don't know that that's true, but um, but for the most part, they've been starting on time. In fact, um, just um, this past week, they were doing a show, and um, they actually had a curfew that they knew they had. It's a sound curfew, um, so the show had to be over by a certain time, which meant Axel had to come out by a certain time. And they hit it, they got out, they did their entire set, and were done before the curfew. (laughs) So, you know, for whatever it's worth, maybe it's maturity, maybe it's a maybe it's a respect thing now, maybe. you know, but uh, hopefully that continues. 
maybe both. It very well could be that. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. I think it's a fascinating story of what happened, and, and we'll get a chance to see. And you're right. I mean, when you talk about Tommy Kavark, who sounds a lot like Roy Khan, but I actually think Tommy's better than Roy, and, and Tommy's one of my favorite vocalists in all. 